if you've never flown away with your bike before, you might be slightly worried about packaging up your valuable bike and handing it over to someone else. But I want to reassure you that if you pack your bike in the right way and sort out your travel arrangements, it can be pretty much worry free and nowhere near as hard as you might imagine. Obviously, you could just fly somewhere and hire a bike. Now, there are places like Whistler, the Alps, where you go into big bike parks. They're going to have more facilities to do that. So proper bike shops with proper bikes, although it can be quite expensive. And I've never done that. I've always taken my bikes so when I ride my bike. Uh, but my first piece of advice for flying with a bike is try and pre-book it. So go online, most airlines now you can do it on the website. Be a good chance to read the T's and C's as well and check out uh, weight limits, anything like that. Because there's a risk if you're showing up to the airport and actually if it's on a popular route with sporting equipment or bikes that actually the plane cargo hold could be full already and it's almost certainly going to cost you more doing it at the airport. You really want to check the airline's weight restrictions and for any airline the maximum they'll take in one bag is 32 kilograms uh, just to do with health and safety of someone lifting that bag so if it's over 32 they literally won't take it so in that case you'd have to start taking bits out of your bag or your box and you don't really want to be doing that either obviously it's going to cost you more money but 32 kilograms is pretty heavy to be fair Back in my days of racing, World Cup downhill, you know, big heavy downhill bike with a spare wheel, spare tires, bit of kit, that's probably getting close. But nowadays with a trail bike, I haven't been that high for quite a while. But you do obviously want to check how much it's going to cost you. Just for example, EasyJet uh, is £35 each way if you pre-book it, but if you show up to the airport, it's then £45 and most airlines will do the same, charge you more for doing it there. Uh, with EasyJet, you do get 32 kilograms allowance. Some flights, uh, some airlines will limit it to about 23, 25, and that's where you definitely have to be a bit more careful. Uh, I'll go into how to pack your bike to make sure it doesn't get damaged as, as much as possible. But when you've got your bag or your box ready, uh, a good way of checking the weight is just using a set of bathroom scales. Not gonna be super accurate, but hopefully you'll have a good idea-ish of how much it weighs. In my days of being a professional racer, obviously it's a traveling circus, sort of hundreds of riders uh, going around the world. So you do hear stories of things happening to bikes. And if bikes get lost, more often than not, it's because of connecting flights. So if you're flying somewhere, maybe to a bigger airport, a big hub airport, and then going onwards, that is normally where bikes get lost and then they don't show up at the other end. So if possible, uh, I mean, you might not be able to avoid this, but if you can get direct flights, I would think that takes away most of the risk of losing your bike on that flight. When it comes to actually packing your bike, you've got two options here. You've got uh, a dedicated bike bag or you've got a bike box. I'll start with this one first. Uh, it's obviously the cheapest way and I guess the most simple and there's different tips for each way to be fair. So this is a bike box that you might find your bike shows up in if you've ordered from a direct brand like Canyon, YT, all those brands where it gets sent straight to you. So try and keep hold of that if you can. Or the other option is to go to a bike shop. Normally they've got hundreds of these because all their bikes show up in these as well. And in my experience, they've always been happy to give me one. Um, I've never had to pay for one. Uh, maybe it's because my friend owns a bike shop, so I go there for them. Uh, but what I will say is that beers and biscuits go a long way in bike shops. So if you feel like you need one and maybe they want to charge you, take some biscuits, you'll probably get one. Before you start taking your bike apart, it's definitely worth giving it a really good clean. This is Blake's bike. It is sort of semi-clean. Uh, in fact, if I was traveling with it, I'd probably make sure it was as spotless as possible. Basically because once you start putting it inside your box, all that mud and any dirt's gonna fall off inside and it can start scratching bits of your bike. Uh, also, it's gonna get the inside of your bag or box sort of irreparably dirty. You're never gonna be able to get in there and clean it all out. But another big reason is because of cross-contamination. Now, I've had this in uh, Australia. They are super hot on this. If you show up with a really muddy bike, you can actually get a fine for it. You're gonna wanna take some tools with you, obviously, to put your bike uh, together the other side. So what I'll do is take a mini set of tools for doing that. Um, what I will start with is taking the pedals off because it's easier when you've got your wheels on. And I will take a big size eight mil Allen key for that because sometimes the multi-tool, you can't quite get enough purchase on that um, to take uh, pedals off. So I'll make sure I take that. I'll take a multi-tool. I will take a mini ratchet set just because they're really nice to work with, especially when you're doing something quite repetitive, like taking your uh, disc rotors, your brake rotors off, or you've got to spin uh, 12 bolts out. It's much easier one of those. 
plus a pump. This is a great travel pump. This is the Turbo Morph G by Topeak. Just quite a small but super powerful pump. And then I'll talk about the spares in a bit I think, uh, later on. But let's take the pedals off first. You can get different size boxes from shops. Some of them are pretty big, actually. You might find those ones, you can just get away with taking your front wheel out. And that's quite nice because if you leave your rear wheel in, it sort of just protects the back end a little bit more. It's not gonna get squashed. Also, your mech is sort of just not gonna hit the floor. So hopefully you can do that. What you have to be careful though, again, is with box size, if they're really big, some, some of them are really long, uh, check with the airline that they're gonna take that size. This one is a bit smaller, where I will have to take out both wheels and various other things. But you know, this bike box, I'm almost certain most airlines will take this. I've never had a problem with one of these. Right, now after taking the pedals off, next thing to do is to drop your saddle. So with a drop post, super easy obviously. Push down, it's just gonna make it a bit smaller. Wheels out um, on this drive, with this fork as well, you've got uh, bolt through axles. So that case, I'll definitely put them back in. Obviously it's gonna stop you from losing them, but also if you sort of put them in there, hopefully it will stop any chance of anything getting squashed. So obviously same on the rear. And because I'm taking wheels out, this is when you're gonna have to do something about the rear mech as well. Because if you leave it on the bike, it's gonna be obviously the lowest thing. So in the box, it's almost certainly gonna bend or break your hanger or mech. So if the battle's coming out, it's definitely time to take the rear mech off as well. When you start taking things off the bike that are still attached, like the rear mech, obviously you still got the chain on there. Uh, it's really important to then start packaging it properly. This is where you see a lot of damage uh, getting done to bikes. It's because they haven't done this bit quite right. So obviously I've still got the, the gear cable and uh, the chain on there. So I just want to try and tuck that somewhere nice. It might be a case of just actually backing the axle off and then wrapping the mech into something soft. I've used a rag before, something like that, but bubble wrap's obviously a really good option. Try and wrap it there and then sort of tuck it inside your chain stage if you can. Then get your axle back through. That's gonna hold it a little bit. And then wrap this around. Make sure that this isn't gonna bang into things. I quite often take some of this electrical tape with me. Try and wrap it as well as you can and make sure stuff isn't moving around. So if you now pick the bike up and drop it into an empty box, it's still going to rattle around and you've got to think about the sort of the extreme points or so the lowest points and the furthest front point. They're the places that are probably going to get smacked into things. So in this case, I've, there's a bash guard on Blake's bike, so that's pretty good. But I'll also try and package it out. So hopefully you might have some of these sort of cardboardy bits that have come with your bike box. Or just think about maybe sticking an old rag underneath there so the bike's going to sit on it and not damage anything. But I'll use this in this case. Also, some of this stuff, so like plumber's pipe lagging, is great for starting to stick around your fork stanchions. Basically anywhere you might think is going to get damaged a little bit with things banging around inside. At this point, I'll actually pick the bike up and start to fit it into the bag. You'll notice that I will still need to take the bars off but always feels to me like it's now easier if it's starting to sit in the box. Okay, obviously too wide. So what I'm gonna do, normally I'd like to try and take the bars off and leave the stem on, because if you take the stem off, the fork can then rattle around, there's nothing holding that in. So it's usually better just to do the bar. And then a bit like the mech, you're gonna have to tuck the bars in somewhere nicely. Uh, and then it's a case of tucking everything else in. Obviously with your pedals, again, I would wrap them in some things. I don't want them rattling around. If the bike gets turned over upside down, it can start you know, scratching things. And wrap your bike with as much things as possible. Again, more bubble wrap, more rags. And with wheels, right. In the case of a box, I would definitely think about taking off your rotors. I have got away with it in the past if I'm being super lazy just by tucking them in, like putting the rotor into the box rather than to the outside, but I have bent them on certain occasions. I've probably flown with a bike, I don't know, a couple hundred times, and they have been bent half a dozen times if I've been lazy and put it into a box. Right, with everything placed in, so wheels to the side of your bike, I then just sort of look at it, try and squash it together, look to see if anything is touching anything. Obviously, everything wants to be wrapped as well as possible. Uh, bubble wrap is the thing, because it doesn't weigh anything. If you start chucking too much other stuff in there, then it's gonna start weighing too much. And really look for anything rattling and moving around. And then you're about done. It's time to sort of close it up, get your uh, brain parcel tape out, 
and make sure you wrap it nicely. You may have noticed I didn't let my tires down. Now, some airlines will ask you to do it. In the last 15 years, I've been asked probably only a couple of times. Uh, so most of the time you don't need to do it, just leave them as they are. I know maybe slightly controversial, but I've never had a problem with it. And obviously it's saving them from pumping them up the other side. Once you've got your bike in, then it's time to make sure your tools are in. I've got a bag that I stick them in again, so you just can't rattle around. I've also got my spare. So in here I've just, I normally carry, what have I got? I've gone. Tire levers, a spare gear cable, a spare mech hanger. Uh, spoke key, just a few bits and bobs that I might need whilst I'm on my trip. So again, make sure that's in. Then it's time to take the box up. Man, you're pretty much ready. Uh, just really important to make sure that you don't put things like multi-tools in your hand luggage because you will get pulled up on those. I guess they could be used as a weapon, so make sure they're in your box tape it up and then it's also something to remember is to take some more tape with you because the other end you're gonna have to cut your bike box open and you have to tape it back up to come home right on to the bag option i'll go through the pros and cons of the box and the bag at the end but what you'll probably see when i do this is basically you don't have to take your bike apart as much and they are just sort of designed obviously to fly with bikes so there's lots of well thought out features which means your bike's going to be protected and it's easier to pack so i'm using the douche bags the savage uh, to show you basically all the features of this bike bag there are other bike bags available, of course, which are gonna give you unique features, but all designed to really you know, be protective of your bike, but also be easy to transport with. So most bike bags will come with wheels as well. So for dragging them through the airport, it's gonna be much easier once it's loaded up. Got instructions here as well, if you ever forget how to do it. So prepping the bike, number one, wheels out, seat down, bars off. You can see a big difference to just the boxes. You've got some metal framework in here as well. So again, super protective, so I'll start piecing this together. Right, in this bag, you've got this sort of nice fork compartment. See that really thick pad in that you slide your fork into. I'll just pop that in there like that. And then there's also that pad on the bottom. So you sit the bottom of your frame. You can adjust this, slide it along. Your then, your frame sits really nicely on that. So start strapping bits in. You can see how well this is gonna protect your fork lowers, your sort of bike is actually strapped down into it. It almost becomes part of the bag, whereas in a cardboard box, there's always a risk that your bike's gonna move around inside. And that's why I really try and pack them as tight as you can. And if it fits a bike box, this, you don't have to. You'll also see, it's a bit of a big time saver, but with this bag especially, you don't necessarily have to take the rear mech off. It's within this framework. So all I do is I sort of slide the bike as far forward as I can get it in the bag. So the mech is inside that framework. Now I shift it up to a low gear. And if you look, it's, it's really hard for that to get whacked by anything. If you are gonna err on the side of caution, you can still take it off. But to be honest, when you take it off, then it's gonna chance, you've got a chance of it rattling around again. So I'd rather leave it on so it stays attached to my bike and just make double sure that it's within the framework of this bag so it's not gonna get whacked by anything. At this point, I'd actually probably stuff my riding shoes, maybe a bit of riding kit in here, like shorts, trousers, just to you know, put them somewhere safe where I don't particularly want them in my other main bags. It might be a little bit dirty. So stuff them down where they're not gonna move around. Uh, one thing you do have to be careful of is uh, I know one airline, EasyJet again, actually specify that you should only have your bike in the bag, no other kit. And I have been pulled up on that once, but that is once in sort of 20 years of traveling with bikes. Most airlines don't care that you've got a bit of other kit in there. Just be careful again of your weight limit. This is where some of these really well thought out features of these bags starts to really sort of pay dividends. So your handlebars come off just like the box, but now they tuck into like a protective pouch there. And this one, you tuck your bar in that way around, goes up and over the top, and it's all strapped in nice and safe. So this is sort of universal go either side of the bike. So depending on your sort of cable orientation, strap that there, also strap it down this side. Again, nothing's gonna move around and it's already really padded, so that can't damage your frame or your fork. So wheels go in the side of these bags, again, in their own sort of pouch, nice and protected. Uh, what you'll see as well is there's sort of framework around the outside and I don't actually take my rotors off when it comes to using this bag particularly because if I slide my wheel in there, strap it up, 
what you see is if I actually, so I've got my rotor facing into the bike, if I actually push on this, like showing, you know, simulating that bike bag getting squashed, that rotor isn't actually going to touch anything because my tyre, my rim actually touches the bike, you know, the side of the frame and the saddle before the rotor even gets near to touch anything. So in my experience, it's always been fine with this bag. I've never actually bent any rotors. It does sort of save me a fair bit of time without having to undo those 12 bolts each time I want to fly. There you go, bike bag is packed. Got wheels, ready to roll. Now, two things to remember, don't stick any CO2 cartridges in there. They'll probably get picked up on the X-ray when you take it to oversized luggage anyway, and they'll ask you to take them out. Also, the moment flying with e-bikes is a real conundrum. Basically, the batteries are too big, so can't do it at the moment. Okay, two different options, but what are the pros and cons of each? Bike boxes are normally free. They're the lightest option, so if you've got a heavy bike, downhill bike, or taking loads of spares, these might be the best option. Also, they're easy to dump, or should I say recycle, at destination airport. So maybe if you're going on a bike packing trip, where you want to get to the airport, build your bike, dump this, then you can do that. Obviously, you're then going to have to try and find a box for the way back. They are just boxes. They're not designed like bike bags with compartments in there for putting your pedals in, things like that. So you've got to pack these really carefully and make sure things can't move around. Plus, if they get wet, they're likely to be damaged and fall apart. I've seen that from getting off the aircraft into the baggage claim, things start falling out of bags. So um, if you do get one damaged on the way out, you're gonna have to go to a bike shop again to get a new one to fly home with. With bags, if you read the instructions carefully and follow the processes, it should be really unlikely that your bike gets damaged. Unlike bike boxes where, hopefully this video is gonna help you out, but for me, a bit of trial and error to learn how to stop the bike getting damaged. Bags, much more simple. They're durable, they're likely to last you years and years. Also, they're likely to be branded so that baggage handlers are more likely to realize there's a bike in there. So hopefully they'll treat it with a bit of respect. There's less disassembly with this. I didn't take my mech off, didn't take my rotors off, so quicker to pack. Also, easier to move around. With the bike box, you've got to use the handles and lift it. If you've got other bags, that can be really difficult. Although you can use trolleys at most airports. With this, it's much easier just to pick it up at one end and pull it with the wheels on the back. Lastly, it's got that protective cage inside to stop things getting squashed. Undoubtedly, they are more expensive than just getting a box, but they are designed to last you years. Uh, they can be bulky if you've got to store it somewhere in your garage after, although this one does sort of go down, you can strap it so it's nice and low, you can chuck it up in your loft hopefully. They can be heavy if they're overbuilt, so bear in mind how much your bike weighs and how much the bag weighs. All right, there's some tips on how to fly with your bike. It's all actually pretty easy, as hopefully I've showed, and hopefully you shouldn't be too worried about getting your bike damaged. Touch wood, I've never had my bike damaged other than a slight bend in the rotors in all this traveling that I've done, and it's got me excited about going somewhere, although that's Blake's bike I've just packed. Hmm.